On Tuesday night, the Supreme Court primaries were held in Wisconsin in which the top two candidates would advance to the general election uh, for the Supreme Court race in April. And these results tell us a lot about what we could expect in two months and ultimately a lot about Wisconsin in general. Now, the stakes of this race couldn't be higher. Uh, I think Politico dubbed this the most important election you've never heard of because quite frankly, uh, for Wisconsin and really for the entire country, this race is incredibly important because it will ultimately determine the balance of power on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. And that means a lot in terms of redistricting, in terms of policy in the state. Again, the conservative Supreme Court had been roadblocking a lot of Tony Evers's uh, executive orders and just legislation in general. So they've been a massive roadblock. Uh, against the Democrats. So naturally, Democrats want to change that. Of course, the court is currently four to three conservative. Janet Protasiewicz is the liberal justice and Dan Kelly is the conservative justice. So we're going to talk about what this primary means and ultimately what we could expect in April. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing down below and liking this video if you enjoy. So many people are saying that this primary election was bad news for Republicans. And the reason they're saying that is because the combined vote total of the two liberal justices comes out to about 54% of the vote to the conservatives 46. That's essentially an eight point lead for the liberal democratic candidates. Now that's a bit misleading because technically this is a nonpartisan race. So on people's ballots, they're not going to see Democrat or Republican. But everybody pretty much knows that the Republicans are going to be backing Dan Kelly and the Democrats are going to be backing Janet Protasiewicz. So it's pretty obvious and it might as well be a partisan situation because it's probably going to play out that way. The last time we had a Supreme Court race in Wisconsin was back in 2020 and that was held in conjunction with the Democratic primary, which of course had a massive gain for the Democrats since the Republican primary wasn't at all competitive and ultimately Dan Kelly was the justice that was ousted in that election. I believe he lost by around 11 percentage points. And now he's the nominee again. His opponent on the conservative side was Jennifer Doro. She was uh, the prosecutor in the Waukesha Christmas Parade massacre. And she ultimately gained local fame uh, because of that. But her strength really was overestimated. I personally thought she would do a lot better. Um, I didn't make a prediction on this race, obviously, since this is a very... Uh, hard sort of thing to predict, especially when you have a top two system, not even uh, who's likely to win. Uh, but Jennifer Doro's uh, strength was really only in the wow counties. And even then she didn't win as decisively as she needed to. Um, ultimately, this is the second time we've had a Republican or conservative leaning candidate who was a wow centric candidate lose a primary. We saw that in 2022 with Clayfish versus Michaels. Clayfish had a lot of support in the WOW area, but it wasn't strong enough and it wasn't enough to outvote the rest of the state when it came to Michaels. And we see a similar thing playing out in this primary as well, where Jennifer Doro was not able to survive on her WOW support alone. And ultimately, that's why she ended up losing to Dan Kelly because he was able to do so much better in the rural areas, which at this point in time seemed to be able to outvote uh, wow in terms of Republican primaries. Now, again, I will stress this is not a Republican primary, but we've seen a very similar effect play out. Now, Tuesday night, we also had the Virginia uh, 4th Congressional District Special Election in which you had uh, Jennifer McClellan win very easily against Leon Benjamin. He was the nominee back in 2022, back in November. Uh, this was a total bloodbath uh, for the uh, Republicans. They only got 25% of the vote. You really just saw a total collapse in turnout, which isn't really surprising considering this race really fell under the radar, especially compared to the Wisconsin Supreme Court race. I mean, you have counties like Dinwiddle County, uh, Sussex County, well, Sussex County is usually uh, blue, but you have Southampton County, which is usually a pretty red county. Um, and, and these other areas, uh, Prince George's County, which is much bluer than it normally is, there was just a total collapse of turnout on the Republican side. And that's really because this was a very low turnout election. Um, and in some cases, that tends to benefit Democrats now more so than it benefits uh, Republicans. So if we take a look at how the conservatives or how the Republicans did in the Supreme Court race um, compared to how they usually do, uh, here's an example of the top line vote breakdown if you want to break it down between all the votes for the two conservative justices and all the votes 
for the liberal justices and sort of translate that into uh, Democrat versus Republican. Uh, Democrats win the popular vote in Wisconsin by eight points. So they win this election by eight points. And interestingly enough, the wow counties uh, around Milwaukee actually trend more to the right. But you have a huge falling away in the rural areas, uh, probably due to low turnout, honestly. And I really think that's what it's down to is these rural voters are not really turning out in these elections. We saw that in 2022 in the Rust Belt in places like Pennsylvania, obviously Wisconsin. Now, Johnson was able to win because he got just enough support in the rural areas and the suburban areas to make it happen. Um, he did a lot better in the wow counties than Donald Trump did. We could just compare some of his results uh, to Johnson's. Johnson did about five, six point better uh, in the wow counties and ultimately was enough to carry him over the finish line, but it was not enough to carry somebody like Tim Michaels over the finish line. You know, he had a number of other problems. He was mainly just a weak candidate and not a good campaigner, very lazy campaigner, but he fundamentally didn't get the votes he needed uh, out of the wow counties or the rurals in order to actually win. And, you know, you just saw a total collapse of the Republicans in places like Milwaukee County and Dane County. Tony Evers nearly getting 80% of the vote out of Dane County. This is a white college educated county, super, super progressive. And, and in places like Dane County with that sort of electorate, you have supercharged voters on the Democratic side that basically vote in every election. As a result, Dane County has much higher turnout than other counties around the state. And that's a real detriment to the Republicans because they need to get much higher numbers in these rurals or in WOW in order to win statewide elections. Johnson was able to squeak out by a point. Honestly, the polling had him doing much better. So this was a massive underperformance. Obviously, it would have been catastrophic for Wisconsin Republicans had he lost. Uh, but he's really the only statewide or federal Republican uh, elected statewide in Wisconsin. Of course, there's another statewide official, the treasurer. Uh, but that's pretty much it in terms of Republican support in Wisconsin. They lost the governorship in 2018. They lost the other statewide offices. Um, and obviously, they lost in the presidential election in 2020. Now, in 2016, when you had Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton in this state by 0.7%, it was mainly due to the fact that Hillary Clinton had collapsed just enough in the suburban areas. Again, the suburbs did trend to the left, but a lot of the votes that would have helped Hillary Clinton that ended up going to Biden in 2020 went to third parties. And as a result, Donald Trump was able to eke it out. He got just enough of the vote in the suburbs and just enough vote in the rurals to sort of cancel out the urban counties. In 2020, that wasn't the case. And I think Republicans are going to run into this problem in Wisconsin and other Rust Belt states in the future. It's that these rurals are never going to be like Alabama, at least not in the next couple of years. I mean, you even compare this to Iowa's rurals. You know, Wisconsin rurals are a lighter shade of red. Uh, even South Illinois rurals, which again is basically the South, uh, there's a big difference. And in order for Republicans to reliably win in Wisconsin or at least have a 50-50 shot, they need to do better in these rural counties while stemming their suburban losses. And I think that's something lost on a lot of Republicans. Um that think that you can just max out the rurals and you could win that way and just let the suburbs uh, totally slip to the Democrats. And, you know, I'd argue that that's a totally untenable strategy because uh, even though WOW makes up only about 33% of Wisconsin's population, uh, these are not Alabama rurals by any stretch. And you have huge population centers like Dane County and the surrounding counties still voting reliably for the Democrats. So it's not as cut and dry as just, uh, letting WOW seed to Democrats and Republicans uh, just do better in the rural areas because it's much more complicated. Again, the Rust Belt is not going to be like the South. So going forward into April, what I expect to happen, I certainly think this race leans in Protosewitz's favor. I think if I had to guess right now, she'd probably win by about uh, anywhere from five to eight points. Now, again, a lot could change from now until April. I think Daniel Kelly is the weaker of the candidates. He could still win, obviously, with the right turnout. But uh, as of right now, I'm not seeing that from the Republicans. I don't think they're going to get enough of the rural vote out. Um, I don't know if they're going to get the margins in uh, the wow counties that they need. So ultimately, I think that Protosewitz will probably win. Um, I think Duro was a stronger candidate, but even her victory wasn't assured, especially given uh, this poor performance. I mean, she would have done better in WOW, but uh, that really wouldn't have mattered. Again, uh, the Republicans did better in WOW than they did in 2020, and they still ended up losing uh, by eight points 
uh, statewide. So it really doesn't matter all that much when you're bleeding so much in the rurals and you have a total collapse in the areas where you're strongest. And we're basically one bad cycle away for the GOP to seeing uh, a Dane County that's going 80% or more for the Democrats. And, you know, if Republicans keep losing ground in the wild counties uh, and, and basically not making significant gains in the rurals, uh, then Wisconsin is going to slip away. And of course, uh, we'll talk about this in future videos, but Wisconsin really is the key state to the 2024 election for president. So again, things like voting laws, redistricting, all of those things are on the ballot. And that's why both parties are fighting fiercely uh, to flip or retain uh, the Supreme Court in Wisconsin. And again, the Democrats and the liberals are far outraising the Republicans, which I think is a common trend uh, that we've seen over the last six to seven years. Basically, since the era of Trump, you have Democrats just with a massive, massive money advantage uh, for the most part in a lot of these races. So we'll see what happens. I think Protosiewicz is going to win uh, as of right now. Obviously, if that changes, I'll make an update and certainly we'll make a video right before the election sort of uh, doing one final prediction. But as of right now, uh, I think the Wisconsin Supreme Court will probably flip. Uh, it's still really anyone's race, though, but given the trends that I've seen and, you know, kind of extrapolating from 2022, um, it seems like the most likely outcome at this point. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, again, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.